Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, with the most creative Terran out there, and the Red, the Admiral, it's Gumiho. But up against a Zerg, who can throw a few punches and take even more, the Rocky Zerg. We have Solo in the blue. A best of three, DVZ starting things off on Crimson Cord, and it looks like Gumiho looking to get out in front of things with a Threeper build to start, looking to mildly to moderately inconvenience the Zerg. So out of solidarity, I'll mildly to moderately inconvenience you by begging for likes. And if you haven't made it there yet, subscribe. It's even more trouble. Gimme, what are we? 1,302 One th One likes on this series, on this cast, and I'll cast another one. I'll probably do it anyways, because I don't know what else I would do with my life. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better. Crimson Court, the map that seems to keep making it through the veto process despite the strong feelings of Zerg players uh, and who aren't quite favoring it because of the, the ridiculous amount of rocks and choke points here. But the Reapers getting caught at the back and one of them caught and killed. And you will get a, a, a well, no. He didn't get a drone. No drones, loses a Reaper. And Gumiho, he actually built four in total. The three per build is more like an It's usually the three to five Reaper build, but that doesn't really roll off the tongue. Uh, so the Queens will get a Reaper kill, and the Reapers get almost nothing in return. A few Zerglings? The Queens? Hmm. Feels good to stretch your legs, doesn't it, Susan? What? Uh, Reapers are back... Speed is on the way. The third hatchery. There's no other options for a third hatch location here. Unless you're willing to mine through the triple thick mineral wall. And let's not even pretend we're going to mine through the uh, double thick rocks here. Four sets of rocks on each of these choke points. Adding up to 12 on either side. So the Zerglings get us around. Zerg, the Reapers just far out of position here. The Queens... It looks like the last one. Where are you? I guess there's no jump down there. Yeah, well. A surprisingly easy cleanup for those e for those early Reapers. Gumiho far overstaying his welcome. Um, yeah, Marines behind. The stim pack will be perfectly protected. And now Solar. In a pretty comfortable position. He's already got 46 drones. He's got that third base. Uh, almost up and running. Gumiho does have three command centers. He's going for Marines and Stim, and they they, they be unwhisper in his ear and say, "Just, just only Marines, bro. Okay, it'll work. Just trust me, bro. You just need to micro. Put the needle down, Beyond. I don't... The engineering bay is a little bit quicker here for Gumiho, and with that third orbital command, you can kind of shore up. Your, your economy. Uh, uh, the mules providing a, a bit of extra boost over the top, making up for the Terran's less explosive uh, worker production. But at the same time, Gumiho just now taking his third. So we're comfortably at 55 drones here. Should be starting a lair momentary. Yep. So, has everything he needs, and he just scouted the mass marines. It was already good. He already knew it was going to be marines. He saw the, the barracks at the front, the stim on the way. It was a matter of how many barracks and how quick are the medivacs. So, Solar has 26 lings on the field. He's got eight brave and beautiful queens. Um, and Gumiho going to unload the marines over on the right lane of the map. And lane indeed. As until these minerals are mined through, which Solar has actually done, and you may regret that, but having any way to close the distance is going to be important. Gumiho loads up again. I guess it was just a, a restroom break there for the Marines, which doesn't really make sense on so many levels. Moving on. Combat shield nearly done, but that little mineral wall may actually work out for Gumiho here as he stutter steps back. The Queens, well, are closing in on the Medivacs. The Marines are holding their ground, though. One medevac goes down, but the marines were able to trade out beautifully. Solar leaving any sort of choke point in those minerals. Maybe you want to consider being a bit more thorough in the future when it comes to mining out the mineral wall. It is a bit annoying to do, but those marines 
having a field day. Gunning down 41 Zerg. I guess the Reaper's got five or six, but for just eight Marines and a medevac, that's a lot of larva at a time Solar sorely needs it. He's building another round. He's at 69 drones, which is nice enough for a mid-game economy. Um, but as he gets a fourth base up, wants to add on a few more. Doomy home, back at home. 59 SCVs. He's got 1-1 one, one complete. He's going to be a little behind Solar, actually. Oh, don't expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. Nope. Come. Okay. Well. All right, then. I guess this is what we're doing. So we're not going to waste the Banelings on a single Marine. Boomyho clearing up the mid lane. The bot lane right now. Uh, opening up as the drones trying to finish what they started. Targets down the creep tumors, but slithers around and slurps up the Marines. And there's no better way to describe what we just saw there. I think I stand by that. Boomyho pushing forward. You got to be very careful as a Zerg not to get overconfident. You cannot underrest Beyond is right. The ghost of Beyond, which is not a real ghost because we know he doesn't build those most of the time. At least recently. Uh, Marines can be the most effective units in the game. But, uh, of course, Banelings and an overwhelming amount of Hydras and Zerglings have something to say about it as well. The Queen's a little bit in an awkward position, but Gumiho has more army supply here. Tanks on the low ground. High ground vision with the medevacs means the tanks can slam the point home into the queen. And the queen, Brenda, where are you going? This is a terrible idea. They can shoot up. Oh, no. Kind of. Hydra's lings and banes crashing through. The zerglings are gunned down by the marines, and the tanks did a number on the queens, which I'm not sure if they were trying to flake and jump down from the high ground. But Gumiho, he targets down most of the banes, eats the rest, and, uh, just wins the game. All right. He steps up to the plate and knocks Solar out of the park. Well, a surprisingly decisive end. I think Solar got a little bit greedy um, and underestimated the power of that position with the siege tanks there. Historically. Yes, Jimmy, we're trying out a new stat screen here. Um, Jimmy knows I'm not good with the numbers, so... Uh, we're going to try to keep it updated. But overall, Solar's gotten the better of Gumiho. But not by any sort of decisive margin. Well, the, the most uh, recent high-profile match was when Solar, with relative ease, uh, beat Gumiho in the GSL Finals. Was it 4-1, 4-2? Either way, Gumiho, after a couple games, looked lost. And Solar was just able to crush him. But, historically... Uh, they've gone back and forth. So Gumiho taking full advantage here in game number one. And he's going to be off to a one-game lead. But I'm sure Solar more than uh, able to shake it off. And we're back on the relatively well-experienced uh, map pool. Well-experienced map pool here. At least the older one. Site Delta. The most inoffensive. I think it's the most played map at this point. It seems to show up in every single series. It is about as cookie cutter as you can get. You got your options for the third base, uh, some open field fight potential, but still you can do some tank pushes around the sides. You got options. Uh, both sides do. So Crimson Court, I think, is is a bit more. Um, how did Cyril put it? Uh, interesting than than most. And Gumiho taking full advantage. I think Gumiho is one of the players who can... If there is a feature or bugs on the map, in which case there were a lot of them last game, then Gumiho will find a way uh, to take advantage of it. Between tank pushes, things like battle cruisers, which he's known for, and, of course, uh, mech, which... If it Maru recently against Cure, if you didn't see the match, uh, you should check it out. I, I don't post mirror matchups often, but Maru versus Cure, and you'll know it by the clickbait battle cruiser title, which doesn't really narrow. Just watch all of them. All right, like and subscribe. Um, but Maru against Cure, people give him Maru credit for this crazy new battle cruiser build. You know where he got it from? Gumiho did it to him. Gumiho. Unfortunately lost against Maru. 
because Maru is just ridiculously strong mechanically. But Maru's like, you made this? Oh. So we took Gumiho's, like, uh, three base battlecruiser style and applied it, and it brought him to the GSL finals. Gumiho didn't make it quite as far, though this season I'm sure he's looking further. But if you see something new, especially mech-oriented for Terran, we probably started with Gumiho. And who knows, maybe Gumiho has a player he beats up on that he steals their builds. Um, and applies them at a higher level. But I, I think Gumiho is that, that split between uh, creativity and high enough level to actually be competitive while being creative. It is going to be Stim yet again. Now, this is another kind of very, very quick Stim here in the grand scheme of things. Does he even have a star port? No. So he's just going to start it off. Is this just a Hellbat build? Because that is like a crazy fast... No, well, he's slapping down another barracks. Interesting. All right. I'll, I'll let it, you know, I'll allow it. I'm just the observer here, not the referee. Those are two different roles in the lobby. The referee can pause the game and chastise the players for doing dumb builds. Which, uh, is power I probably shouldn't have. Because it would also involve time travel, but, you know... Hmm. More info on that yesterday. Stim pack. Medivac, a single medevac on the way. So this is kind of a bare-bone, stripped-down, early marine Hellion timing. The Queens? Well, not happy with the Hellions being anywhere nearby, but fun fact. The reason Queens sometimes get caught in an awkward pathing is units will move a as uh, close a distance as possible to their move command. As the Queen flies, or more accurately doesn't. So they will take a straight line, and they don't factor in whether or not they're on creep, for example. So the queen will say it's 10 steps to get over there. And if nine of those steps are off a of creep, and it would have taken 15 steps on creep but gotten there quicker, well, we don't factor that in. All right. That's uh, a bit too much math for anyone involved. And that is why sometimes Brenda and the knitting crew take their sweet, sweet time um, walking off the beaten path, or the creeping path, at least. Third base is on the way. Gumiho with this. It, it, it really does feel like he he pulled into Beyond's bag of builds. What a save on that Overlord. The transfuse of the last second. This is such a Beyond-esque build. A single medevac of Stim Marines with some Hellions darting in. I'll well, see how it works out for him. I mean, last game, decisive tank timing. Just crushed Solon before he could really get anything going. And now the Marines on the back line there, picks them up, gets out. The Queen still uh, boxing out. Wait, what do we have in there? A Hellion, a Hellbat, some Marines, the Spore Crawlers. No, well, Gooby was trying to do some crazy micro, but then he was in Spore Crawler range. So it kind of fell flat, just like the Medivac, but Gooby was just darting left, right, and center. Whereas Solar rolling with the punches right now, but his Baneling's not rolling yet. Baneling speed still on the way. He's got 1-1 one, one a little bit slower than Gumiho, who's now at 62 SEVs and counting. So a comfortable three base economy. He's going up to barracks. Oh, those are just barracks three, four, and five now. That's actually remarkably late on that production. He's even adding on a second factory, which makes sense as he needs something to kind of supplement. It's going to be a Hydra down out of Solar. More Hellbats just kind of getting scattered in there. Like croutons on a salad. Sure, we'll, we'll go with that one. Meanwhile, the, the Banelings crashing into the Hellbats, which tank them pretty well. Back at home, the Zerglings overrunning the Hellions. Reinforcing Marines will gun down the rest, but that should be, for the most part, the end of the Hellions for now. Gumiho down 30 supplies. Solar, I don't think... 
I don't think he's going to make the same mistake, and it's going to be harder to do so, as very simply, the map is less well-suited to tanks just obliterating everything. Uh, yeah, so there's that 80 drones. The one thing he's missing is an infestation pit at this stage. He's got hydras on the way. He's building so many drones, which is the mistake he got caught in the last game. Let's see if Gumiho can catch him on it. But he's already lost enough Hellions. And he's gone so far down the Hellion road that his production is not really at the point he can compete with Solar. He needs more barracks online. Those are 6, 7, and 8 now. The Octo Rax is coming together. Infestation pit for Solar. 1-1 one, one now done. He's going to have to survive this push out of Gumiho. Well, it's more of a double-double here. Got a couple medevacs north, a couple south with whatever units it seemed like he had nearby. Some hell bad action. The queens targeting the medevacs, half HP. Doesn't have any queens to the south at the moment. Gumio clearing up the creep, but there's so much of it, he's not actually able to finish it off. Gotta be careful with the hydras out there. More hellions. He just keeps building hellions. What the hellions? Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Formally. The Banelings coming through. Um, well, SCV's trapped in a prison of their own design. Seven go down to the Banelings. Not exactly a cheap exchange for Solar, but just trying to keep Gumiho's economy under wraps here so we can potentially overwhelm with the Hydraling Bank. The Hive just started, so we've got quite a mid-game fight ahead of us. Lurker Den is now on the way. Gumiho still skirting around the edges of things. Solar on full economy now. Four, five bases, 87 drones. Gumiho has all his production online. He's got a fourth base as well. And a fusion core? Fusion core? Fusion core? I... It's certainly an interesting time. And he might need it as the Terrans on the field are really struggling. Like, really struggling against the Hydraling Bane right now. There's nothing. The Gumiho just loses everything on the field. He finishes 2-2 for the half a dozen units he has left. He's building five Marauders and six Marines at a time. A Medivac made it into the main. It may drag Solar's attention and a few of his units back. But that... Is he going for Caduceus Reactor? He's getting Blue Flame now. Gumiho, pick a lane. This, well, more accurate on Crimson Court, but I, Gumiho just, it's, it's a very odd choice to go for Blue Flame at this stage. It feels like that ship has already sailed. And there's Caduceus Reactor out of the Fusion Core, the Medivac Energy Regen. And there's only one Medivac right now, so Regen will be much appreciated. But I don't know if there's going to be much opportunity as Solar is just rolling through. There's not enough units. GG. Gumiho, this time around, one of those Beyond builds just not working out. As Solar is able to run him down. Not exactly sure what Gumiho... Uh, that... So, you can't make a cheesy Terran omelet without breaking a few eggs. And if the heat isn't high enough, you'll undercook your eggs. In which case, you should invest in Blue Flame, possibly earlier. And if you're going to go for Blue Flame, you should probably do it while you still have Hellions. So, Gumiho, a bit undercooked that time around. But now we're tied up. And going into... Oh god, it's Amphion. I have no idea. So, Amphion is another very interesting map. Another map where... Different strategies will very likely be utilized. So, interesting for us, but also, um, well, I think it, for the Gumiho, Gumiho fans out there, that's a good thing. Um, I think Gumiho has a lot of fans. Solar has a lot of fans as well, but Gumiho has this distinct style, whereas sometimes feels like Solar is Serral's stunt double. But, all Zergs play alike, and then there's Dark. What? What is this? What? Okay, well, he's gonna start off with... 
that's a reaper jump location expressly for the reaper that's why they they cut a gap in the chain link fence conveniently for the reaper so if they could jump up a cliff you don't think they could jump a fence it would be the fence that makes it too high to jump over all right it's just simple math um hmm solar it's gonna be hatched first into a pool so we sticking with the standard here technically this is the standard one rex expand build out of gumiho i guess he wanted the reaper like four seconds faster maybe there's a chance he could have avoided scouting but all right a bit of a spicy one Gumio, able to take down, well, been struggling with the micro. I'm still wondering, I'm still thinking about that last game, like, what was he trying to do? It feels like Hellbat Marine as like a main composition, but it didn't, it, all the pieces were still not really fitted into the puzzle there by the time Solar just came ac across and punched him in the face, so... We'll see if this time he tries another kind of awkward bioplay. Or if he has something a bit more mechanically oriented in store. Because Gumiho already started with two gas. No 3cc. There's a starport on the way. And a lot of gas. So I am, I am kind of leading up. I am dreaming here. But if there was ever a map for it. The moment the starport finishes, he sends out an SCV to the corner, and he builds the fusion core. And there are no other options. This will be for battle cruisers. Well, at least one, but possibly more than one. He calls in the fleet, the Admiral. When it matters most. A raven is on the way. Will he cancel the raven at the last moment? And tr is he trying to sell this to Solar? Because right now, Solar's coming in with the Ovi. There's a conspicuous two marines in position. He, he canceled the raven. And he's going to start the battle cruiser. It will see the tech lab starport. Not building anything, which doesn't... I mean, even unless you see the fusion core, it's impossible to tell whether or not it's a battle cruiser for sure. But all right, dancing around with the zerglings. More queens on the way. Really, the while the knitting needles are not particularly well suited to taking down the flying teleporting laser bathtubs, they are still the best option for just an anti-air buffer. As Zerg very simply has no other anti-air units. Hydras, if you get a lair and spend 50 gas apiece for a unit that is easily outmaneuvered. Aspire, even more expensive. So queens and spore crawlers, neither of which are particularly mobile, especially off of creep, are kind of the required options. Does he jump? He jumps directly into the main. Wow, Solar called the bluff, but it wasn't a bluff at all. He doesn't even have a spore crawler duck. Oh no, this could be absolutely disastrous. And here come the Hellions. Brenda, split up, Susan, split up. Take your team, go right. Lucille, go left! And everybody panic! We're all panicking! Don't run that. Don't, don't panic! Ah! Hmm, is what I assume that most queens feel. Oh my god, it's an absolute and utter disaster. 18 drones being incinerated. And counting between the battle cruiser and the Hellions. The Hellions will get taken out. Pushed into the sea here, but I see a disastrous situation. Another battle cruiser is on the way and why not solar does have a layer done but disastrous damage already done by the initial battle cruiser he has to build spore crawlers which cost drones he loses drones which cost drones 
he gets drones incinerated by the Hellions, which cost drones. And now it's all added up. But Gumiho ain't done. There's a jump! Even the cameraman was surprised. I, <laughs> He didn't jump directly into the main. There's a spore crow there. Goes off to the side. Gonna deny a lot of the scouting. Guess there's a zergling over here. Gets an overlord. But wait, there's more. Might have enough for one transfuse, but whatever. <laughs> okay. What is... Oh, yes. Uh, we changed it to hurricane engines or something. That is the cyclone speed upgrade. Uh, so, does he have any cyclones? Not yet. But this time around, Gumio, I think, has the space. Jumps home. To the shipyard. Well, to the repair yard, where the SCVs can repair it. Chad, why, why can we repair air units, but not attack them? Our, we've been all, this is, that's above your pay grade, Billy. Shut, just shut up and repair it. I, I hate contractors. <clears throat> Cyclones on the way. And Yamato Cannon is the choice from Gumiho. So, investing even more in the cruisers, he's gonna have two of them, but the Yamato Cannon is just constant value. Can easily want- Was that a Zergling? I- I assume so. I assume he wasn't just shooting at his own SCVs to, for target practice. Yamato Cannon online. Gumiho, bring us around! Fire the cannon! There's a quick 180 into tactical jump, the no blink. Uh, the no look blink. Back home. The sandbag depot's here. And right now, Gumio's in full control of the situation, but... Solar? As resilient as ever. Alright. If there is a Zerg in the world who can take this sort of punishment, well... He's in front of us right now. As Gumiho... Building up into siege tanks. Is that a third battle cruiser? No, just he just grouped him up. There's cyclones on the way. They got the speed upgrade done, which helps them uh, reposition and potentially kite back. Infestation pit just now starting for Solar, who's at 76 drones. He's lost dozens of them, but he's rebuilt even more. There's enough corruptors to box out the battle cruisers without committing so much of his supply and his money to not have a ground arm. So he's gonna chase Gumiho back, but with siege tanks firing, Solar will have to back off. A barracks lord just scouting across, seeing if there's anything he needs to do on that side of the map. Just, uh, honestly, I, I, I love that style, and I think it needs to be used more. TY was using it just the other day when he qualified for GSL. But the bear 150 minerals for something that's essentially impossible to kill quickly? Eh, it flies faster than an Overlord without the speed upgrade, fun fact. Well, trying to get rid of the Raven, but the Raven Dorito dusts in turn, which is going to make it easier for those Cyclones to potentially take down the Corruptors. There's still the Battlecruiser somewhere. It looks like they're slipping uh, around the right side here. Surprisingly agile creatures for being the largest and most expensive Terran unit aside from your mother. And now more Cyclones on the way. Blue Flame this time makes a lot more sense at this timing. As the Hell Clones out in front, a rock between the siege tanks and everything else, the battle cruisers waiting for their opportunity. Or maybe you forgot about it, it's unclear. But they can just use... You gotta be a little careful, because at this stage of the game, uh, there could be infestors with fungal or neuroparasite, so... But Gumiho, one of the few Terrans, who diligently has a raven with his army, negating a lot of the potential of those infestors, especially the burrowed ones. And, oh, the siege tanks, the queens as well, but... Oh, Brenda, hurry up! Oh my, how does this keep happening? A few queens taken down. The battle cruisers caught one. 
brought low and the other forced away. But keeping the corruptors busy. And while battle cruisers remain, Solar is going to be reluctant to commit to too many broodlords. He's got the greater spire on the way. There's already Thors in production, plenty of cyclones, and even Vikings also being added on. Empty armor missile gonna help out. Sprays the corrosive bow across the board. The corruptors may finally find that raven. They'll get it, but it may cost him a couple. There's still the one battle cruiser. Three more command sensors on the way for Gumiho. And reinforcing the mech army down the center line. Actually, mine through a bit of the mineral wall. There's a few bases that could be unlocked with rocks and mineral walls here. Tanks in the front. Forces in to back off. Any vipers on the field? No vipers yet. No brood lords either. So Gumiho's inexorable march forward. He's got siege tanks on the high and low ground. Brood lords are being morphed directly in front of Gumiho, giving him about as much time and as much warning as he could ever ask for. So the Thors are marching out onto the field. The tanks are backing off, realizing that they might become a liability as opposed to a benefit. And with the brood lords, Rumiho's going to need to bring all of his anti-air to bear. But there's still a battle cruiser. There's only one corruptor left. The battle cruiser has waited for its moment. The, the anti-air is one corruptor and four queens. The battle cruiser is actually mostly uncontested here which means it could potentially fight the Broodlords. But here comes the first wave. There are a couple Vikings. Solar, with really nothing to keep these Broods alive. The Vikings will just take them down easily. The, even the Battlecruiser is coming back. Solar fighting on the ground. He's gonna use Corrosive Bow to knock out some tanks. But overall, there's no answer. He committed all of his Corruptors into Broods. There are some Queens underneath, but the battle cruiser is back. 14 kills, which is eh, pretty low for a battle cruiser, but the amount of attention, and he is rebuilding more. Solar has not committed enough to the empty air, but he's committed plenty to the empty ground, and he's gonna use it here. Two, two attack upgrades are done. Melee and rage. More zerglings streaming over the front. The Ravagers will crush through the defenses, and the zerglings stream into the gap. Just a single Thor on the field here. The battle cruiser, though, is continuing. To just hit whatever it can, strafing the entire base. The Queens will finally come back to defend. Yamato Cannon is ready. The Queens are no match. It has plus two armor. They're barely scratching the paint. He might be forced to tactical jump back, but then he'll be in position to defend. More corrosive biles. That tank is in such a nasty spot, it was hard to get the vision for it. Takes down another one, though. Solar. Oh, Mass Thor here. And Banshees are on the way as well. Adding a little bit more spot defense for empty ground options, plus three mech weapons in plating in production for Gumio, who has held on to all of his bases, but Solar has a huge amount of mining right now. He's got his all but the left side of the map, so two or three, maybe going on four mining bases. That is a massive income, and he's going to need it. Because so far, Solar has lost 5,000 more minerals, but about the same amount of gas. More battle cruisers on the way. It's up to Solar to figure out how to break Gumio here. As Gumio is clearly more cost effective, he's got the box art units. Thor battle cruiser composition. Vikings overhead. Solar has a couple vipers. He has no corruptors, which is a, and a lot of optimism clearly. Gumiho, his army is a bit strong out here. The Brood Lord's helping out. Corrosive Bile, helping to knock out almost another Thor. Where is the anti air? Gumiho continues to add in battle cruisers. And having more than one or two. Yamato cannons onto the Vipers! See you later! And oh my. Well. Without the Yamato. Without the Vipers. There's nothing to really contest the Thors. It feels like the battle cruisers opened up the game and now they may close it. As there's no empty here. The queens are a sorry excuse for it. 
but corrosive vials he's spraying over his own army it's literally a spray and pray here and it's not going to be enough the vikings and the battle cruisers and, and solar there's nothing yamato cannon onto the broods just scraping over the queens corruptors on the way but solar's out of minerals here jumps away with a couple he can jump away with the rest when no one fasters to hold him down what's left nine more corruptors in production gumiho has seven orbitals at no point has he been even it seems like he hasn't even been remotely concerned about losing a base whereas solar is constantly under threat of losing the game it is seven thors and six battle cruisers that is a cinematic box art composition right there this is not a real army. This is Bronze League Heroes. But here we are, Gumiho getting revenge for the GSL Finals. I don't think Solar can stop this. The battle cruisers are operational. The Thors are in position. The Yamato Cannon's online. The anti-air getting knocked out of the sky. And that's it. Gumiho with a clear and decisive victory charts a course across the map and claims it. And honestly, it looked like Solar was just absolutely lost on how to deal with it. It's such, like, he looked for the battlecruisers, but Gumiho was so decisive in building them. It was a two-base battlecruiser build. He didn't go for the third command center. He got the second guess. And yes, we have more Gumi games. All right, our anti-spoiler games. Gumiho versus Hero. Don't go anywhere. This isn't the outro. Like and subscribe. Wake up! Hopefully that game woke you up a little. I, I wasn't sure if Gumiho would commit to anything, or if he, we were just going to see uh, uh, be unfangirl builds, but uh, I'm happy we saw a true Gumiho, Gumiho build there. I'm still interested on that Psy Delta game, though. What was he trying to accomplish? Because it was clearly something a little bit different, but still something interesting. Just like I think this game of Gumiho versus Hero. All I know is Banshees, okay? I, I don't like to spoil myself but I usually check if there's an interesting unit or something that gets built that always, doesn't always get built. And this one has banshees. Spoilers. There we are. Oceanborn is the map we find ourselves on. Oh, and don't forget to smile. Changing gears just a little bit into Darren versus Protoss. But I think we can spend, with no proxies here, a bit of time. He commanded... I don't even know. It, when when players like Gumiho decide they're going to play Bio, and it works sometimes. But, like, I'm like, what a waste of your talents. <laughs> it, it's important because mech is... Mech and things like Battlecruisers are kind of... You can't play it every game. If, if the Zergs will adapt, and they will counter it. The real value is that you could play it every game. Like, the threat is there. So, uh, and he made good on it. I'd say one in five games or so. They, and, I mean, Gumio and Hero and Gumio and Solar have both played each other literally hundreds of times. So there's a whole meta in and of itself. It's not just Terran versus Protoss, but it's Gumiho versus Hero, or Gumiho versus Solar. Um, that is the meta. There's And then Dark versus Everyone is also one of the uh, most common ones. But Gumiho with a full-on one-base tank push here. I'm always looking. This matchup especially, I'm looking for any sort of innovation. Unfortunately, not literally innovation, who seems to have... Um, essentially retired i don't know if he's officially announced it but uh he hasn't managed to qualify for gsl and there really there aren't too many other tournaments in korea unless you're playing in the weekly so all right here we go it's going to be phoenixes against a tank push right now hero has three stalkers and one phoenix he's slapping down He's slapping down shield batteries. But, well, is there a Reaper wall? Which Gumiho 
I think is looking to take advantage of. The SC, the tactic boys to repair. Gumiho. Like, can he just, yeah, he's just gonna hold the tank. He's targeting shield batteries. There is a backup battery there. Shield battery overcharge required here. He's boxing out, but the medevacs and the SCVs are helping out on both fronts. Kicks up the tank, but the SCVs are repairing in the air, which brings us back to the physical improbability of that. Another tank coming in. Um, none of these look like banshees, but they do look incredibly interesting as Gumiho. The probes are pulled and Oracle shows up. The Viking is on the ground, so it doesn't help out with the anti or he takes it out. The Viking, well, the medevac is taking a lot of damage, but it's not dying. The Viking back in the sky. And Gumiho's repair. 12 probes down. Remember behind this? There, where Gumiho does not have a command center. He does not have a follow-up at all. So he needs to do critical damage. If he kills this Nexus, he's already killed enough probes. If he kills this Nexus, he may have a good shot. Poke it forward, pick it up, juggling with the tanks, puts it right back down just to retarget, I think. And picks up another tank. The medevac may go down. The SCVs were a bit distracted, and that could cost him. As the energy, but the SCVs are pulled. Oh, th there's the Banshee. I don't, I don't know how it came to this. Wow. I don't... Hero is down to seven probes. There's a Viking on the ground. Are, is there enough? Can he lift the Viking? No, he's going to lift the tank down here. The Zealot is facing. He's killed the SCVs. Cloak is on the way. And there's no real counter. Hero is down to eight probes, but Gumiho has no units. He has 20 SCVs. He's building Cyclones. There is no answer to Cloak Banshees besides waiting out the energy, which both sides now have no counter to the energy-based units of their opponent. That is still any amount of Phoenixes is too many. Did he just not bother with a Cyclone? Where is the Cyclone? It's dead. Oh, it was right there. So Hero's just camping the starport. He doesn't have enough energy to kill the workers. But at the same time, Gumiho isn't going to be able to get anything out of his base. This is... One of the most confusing scenarios. Hero has been rebuilding probes. He knows of the threat of Cloak Banshee, but I don't think he realized that first Banshee. There's a shield battery, which is a huge deal here. I think Gumiho canceled and restarted the Banshee. Which means, obviously, he doesn't have a Banshee, but at the same time keeps the Phoenixes from taking it out. Will Gumiho try to go through the shield battery? It will run out of energy. It's actually a little out of position because of Hero's Pylon. He's actually just going to target the shield battery. Cyclones are about to pop out, but he cloaks the Banshee on this side, and there's no detection. But the Banshee will run out of energy quickly. Hero can lift the Cyclone. Probes are being slaughtered again. He recalls the Phoenix's home. There's no detection here. He kills a Stalker. Can... Um, okay. So he recalls the Phoenix's home. Kills the Banshee. Now Gumiho... Oh my god, how did he finish a command center? During all of this, how did he manage to actually finish a command center? The the phoenixes are fanning out across the map, trying to hunt down banshees. I think they're about to find one. It has no real energy here. He spots it. That's a huge... He ran out of energy. He flipped on the cloak and it immediately shut down. Which is like a, a movie action scene. They're like, oh no! There are turrets on the way. Cyclones. Two of them. The Phoenixes have rebuilt a lot of energy. Um, another Banshee is trying to slip out. Hero barely misses it. There's an SC. Get to work! No! He's gonna finish the turret on the low ground. None of these you... Well, I guess technically the Oracle could kill turrets, but good luck. He kills another Phoenix. This turret will finish and actually kind of... Outfl 
Hero is up to 22 workers, but another Banshee has slipped across. Does Hero still have his Oracle? Yes. It's at 26. He has enough energy for revelation, but a Banshee comes in again. Oh no. What a disaster piece of a game. And the, the battery's depowered. Oh no. Hero. As soon as the battery's repowered, he's going to have to do something different here, but... Just trying to buy as much time as possible. But still, well, Gumiho has the expansion. There's the revelation. The phoenixes have to come back yet again. The banshees are paying for themselves. Many times over. Hero, though, he, he's lost 41 probes in nine and a half minutes. Gumiho's tank push, which I think was designed to take advantage of the Reaper Wall. I appreciate that, by the way. I always think the Reaper Wall is a bit of a liability as opposed to a benefit. Like, you wall off one unit and you have your entire, uh, like, like a third of your infrastructure exposed? I don't think so. Anyways. Gumiho is a bunker. Hero gonna try to break him. Uh, oh my god, he's gonna go mech! against Protoss. I mean, it, there are definitely extenuating circumstances here. As he's already got a lot of the units that are required for mech. And he's kind of stuck in his base, so. That siege tank is in position. Hero just taps out. He's had enough. Gumiho. Now, the tank push may very well have killed him, but overall, a decisive victory against solar and that game at least against hero that was something i'm gonna steal that one i don't know how well it's gonna work hero was doing a very greedy well, that's another demonstration of why we don't go stargate instead we go blink most of the time but gumiho across the board with some creative builds after a relatively bland start he spiced things up which i hope you enjoyed and made your day a little bit better and it'd be awesome if you got the means of motivation check out patreon or youtube membership but I hear liking and subscribing is still free for now. Uh, and if you haven't yet checked out the second channel, Winter Gaming TV, for streams, we got some of the uh, guide streams and stuff, which um, I, I found they work better in stream form than they do as uh, one-off YouTube videos, because, I mean, I'm just watching the pros nowadays, right? Yeah, totally, Winter. I'm going to play three hours a day, and I'm going to get moving on. Go check it out with Sarah. Uh, otherwise, okay, we got sidetracked there. But thank you for watching. I have a banshee on my shirt. Oh, my God. Okay, Jimmy, cut it off. See you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill. Just, just edit it out.